topic du jour. There's another thing that a lot of investors are talking about. It's the promise of China. This idea, and I, you know, it's time to get your global view here because so many people rely on you for, for the macro perspective. The view here is that the GDP in China will expand faster than in the United States, and a lot of investors are kind of shaking off geopolitical tensions on the back of that theory. Do you see the same promise that the China bulls are seeing? I do not. Um, I was in love with China until about six or seven years ago. You go over there and the energy in Shanghai was like New York on crack. I mean, just it's just fantastic energy. The entrepreneurs were exciting. They were into it. Um, and then uh, Xi Jinping did his thing. And if you look at China and the rise of China, I think it all sort of happened. You had this internal capitalist system with a bunch of people that act like crazy New Yorkers um, building new businesses in a dynamic economy. Um, but he has proved he's not a capitalist. He's definitely not a monopolist. There's only room for one monopolist in China in his mind, that's him. Anybody that gets their heads stuck up. And I honestly think he either, either doesn't understand why China grew and succeeded the way they did, or frankly, he doesn't care because in terms of staying in power. But I would be looking out 10 or 15 years, I just don't see it. I, unless there's a change in power there at the top, uh, I think that's going to be a very undynamic economy. Uh, it's not so much the geopolitical concerns. I will say this, that if I'm right, it makes me more fearful of military action because that's when dictators become more dangerous is when they've got to divert attention from the immediate problem. So what they're doing now is very stimulative. We're expecting a sugar high and some kind of robust growth there maybe for six to nine months. But looking out, I'm, I, don't, I do not look at them as, as a big challenger in the United States in terms of economic power and growth. There's equally been a lot of investor questions about the future of Japan as well. So as you can see here, Stanley Druckenmiller just said that there's no future economically for China. So this is bad. I mean, my entire portfolio is purely Chinese. The only reason I bought it is because it's very cheap. And it's clear that this is the sentiment of the market, obviously, because prices are going down. I mean, that's how people are deciding to vote with their money and with their feet or whatever. So we're going to see that really people don't think that China has a good future. And also, I mean, he is right because you look at China's prospects and they're very bad economically and the slowdown isn't even going to, there are no signs that it's going to stop slowing down economically because the regulatory burden or whatever you want to call it of Xi Jinping. I mean, Stanley Druckenmiller said Xi Jinping has destroyed China's prospects for the next 10, 15 years. He just said that. He said it's not going to rival, rival the United States. It has no future. So my portfolio is looking bad on that. It's already been two years, basically, of just no growth from China. So... Um, this year looks like it's zero growth too, so it looks like there is no future with China. China looks to be completely done, and I'm not, I'm holding for now, but maybe it's, obviously, maybe it might not be a really good idea with Xi Jinping. I mean, um, I don't know what he's going to do to, like, U.S. ADR holders.